How would you say John Paul's theology of the body has influenced your art? Because you went from that retreat with me in 2001, yeah, where 98% of it went over your head, but nonetheless some seeds were planted. Mm -hmm. Then I meet you a few years later, and you said, yeah, I've been reflecting on this, and that weekend really started something that changed my life. And how did how has learning theology of the body informed your your art? Right away, very practically, the the um, receptivity was the first major thing that theology of the body did for me artistically. The whole idea of an action being receptive, an action being surrender, like being actively surrendered. Mm -hmm. um, was huge because I realized that... Can I, I lay that out yeah, theologically yeah, first, please, and yeah. then you can launch on how that yeah. impacted your music? So so in JP2's teaching, which is not just his teaching, but the whole teaching of the Christian tradition, there's this analogy in the Bible that God is the bridegroom and humanity is the bride. And the idea is that St. John says, this is love, not that we first love God, but that he first loved us. And this puts the creature, whether you're male or female, this puts the creature in a posture of receptivity before God. And this is why John Paul II says, woman is the model and the archetype of the whole human race, because to be human means to open, to receive divine love, conceive divine love, and bear it forth. That's the theology of a woman's body, right? So this is the theology behind what Mike is saying about, as an artist, learning to be receptive. Because And, and so unfold what that means as an artist. Yeah, so be, prior to that um, really internalizing, I was writing songs in, kind of in a graspy way. I knew I needed to write songs. I felt like I wanted to, but I was really grasping at the songs. And so what that means is I would sit down, I'd say, I need to write. And I would sit down and just force myself to push it out. But it was so choked. It, it, was, it wasn't flowing. And you would see it. Like mm -hmm, you could mm -hmm. hear it. I could hear it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, once I opened myself up to this whole idea of, no, just surrender yourself, then it flipped it to where it said, when it comes to you, right, always make yourself available to, to record in, that, in the broader sense, to copy, to write something down. If you do that, you're just fishing, you're gathering, and you're it's like over time, you're just allowing things to naturally inspire you and come to you, which is really kind of how God works, right? You realize something when you step on the bus, you realize something when you're at the fruit market, yep. right? Yep. Uh, and record those things somehow. And then, but make an effort then at some point to take that like sack of thoughts and play it on the table and see what you have. And that to me was a huge difference than just, I need to write, I need to write yeah, yeah, yeah. versus, okay, it's been a couple months. Here are some ideas. What works? Like what's the puzzle that I can put together and then continue that idea forward. So, okay, here's, here's a, a chord progression and here's a melodic, melodic concept. And here is, is okay. A chord progression, melodic concept. Take that. Okay. I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna sing the melody, and naturally these words are kind of marrying themselves to the melody. And so you kind of find, uh, Bono talks about, they call it Bangalese. Bangalese, Bangalese. Yeah. yeah. It's just that like, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna flesh out the melody, and by doing that, automatically words kind of like yep. work the best. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and so you just do that, and more often than not, what you are, your Bangalese is the best option lyrically yep, yep. and so it's not a cop-out like it's happening organically and then you have that lyric and you say wow that lyric actually resonates with me right now because it means abc and i'm going through you know this and that totally works but then if that's it if that's all you have stop it's okay. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to write two lines. You have one line. Yeah. A I, I had that experience. I haven't written a song in 20 years, but I used to write songs. And I remember this time, just as you're describing, I had a chord progression and I'm doing the working out a melody yeah. and I'm just finding words that fit with the melody I'm hearing. And I had this, how I needed a friend 
th- those words just came out. How I needed a friend, and it, the melody worked, the words worked, and I crafted this whole song around those words about how I met my wife and how we got married. And I think it was it was one of the the best songs I've I've ever written. And yeah. you know those moments where you're like. I'm open to something. I'm open to some inspiration here. I'm not grasping at it. I didn't write this out of a, a I got to do it. it. It's something that I've received. Yeah. I mean, how many musicians talk about this experience when, I mean, U2 talks about yeah, just, God shows up in the room, yeah. right? And something happens that we we were open to, but we didn't do it. It came through us it's it's a real inspiration it really is and it, i'm not gonna like go down the path of like it was written in the stars but like there is a reality of there's a right way to play the concepts there's a right way for the concept to materialize and there's a wrong way and the brilliant artists know how to push that just to that ledge of this is this almost doesn't work but yeah, it yeah. does and because of that it's brilliant yeah.